with you. I notice it says that um, David Gorski, and of course, um, uh, I know, you know, any, any sort of skeptics, anybody with any, any kind of, um, who's done any sort of reasonable work in sort of challenging narrative will have come under the, you know, will have been attacked by David Gorski, right? Yep. We know that, right? We, we know this, 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 this guy, right? And I notice it says, in the David Gorski, described Weinstein as a prominent COVID-19 contrarian and spread of disinformation, and one of the foremost purveyors of COVID-19, you know, disinformation, blah, blah, blah. I mean, so, uh, yeah, so that, that's, the, that's the kind of thing. But um, he, um, so he, I think, works, he must also work with this, this guy, Alex Brown. In fact, do you know that there's, are you aware that there's an article which claims that, which is, you know, on, um, uh, which I found on, you know, just on, on the internet by a search, which, which claims that Gorski himself is a kind of like a master um, Wikipedia editor and has been for a number of years going under the name of, um, he's denied it, but very weakly under the name of, um, I'm just going to get it up here, of uh, Marcel, did you know that? Uh, I did not know that. You should look. You should look that up because then you yeah, can see absolutely. how extensive. How he's extensive. clearly a, he's clearly a very powerful force in creating the fictional counter narrative that is so destructive. And he works with, and he clearly must work with people like this. This Alex Brown, right? I mean, this is the other thing. What is Alex Brown on his own web page? He um, he's a retired computer programmer who had a, whose PhD was in English. Yes. Well, what the hell is this guy? This guy is the gatekeeper now of most medical information on Wikipedia. Well, it's How even, does that work? It's even worse than that because we all understand that there is something marvelous about a an, an actually encyclopedic encyclopedia, right? The ability. It is, it is an incredibly powerful, uh, enlightening force, a democratizing force to have a source that you can go to. It's not perfect. It's never been perfect. But the idea that if I want to know, you know, um, you know whether a brontosaurus uh, is likely to, you know, have, you know, have been strictly vegetarian in nature, it's a very good chance I can go to Wikipedia and find out that answer in short order, right? Or if I want to know something about uh, uh, vaccine orbital, uh, vaccine orbitals, uh, at atomic orbitals, or uh, you know anything, if I want to know something about what a cumulonimbus cloud is, yeah. So we all have been trained that this uh, library of Alexandria to the tenth power is at our fingertips. But how powerful is it to have the library of Alexandria? have a mechanism whereby if you need a, per, a particular person's reputation destroyed, we can arrange that, right? Now, yeah. this all, of course, raises the question who this Alex Brown is. Is he motivated? Um, is he just personally confused about COVID and he's a zealot? Is he motivated by some conflict of interest that we can't see? Um, and, you know, then we get to this even more difficult problem. I knew that I was being libeled by Wikipedia, but what is there to do about it? Because Wikipedia has section 230 protection here in the United States, which means that because it is a, a platform rather than a publisher, or at least by the formal definition, it is not responsible for what is there. So somebody who wishes to libel you and has the wherewithal to become a powerful editor uh, of Wikipedia has the ability to insert into the equivalent of our library of Alexandria, extremely destructive false information about you, which at the very least will cause people who don't know anything about you to throw up their hands and not know what to think. It's going to cause people to stay away from you because they just don't want to get involved. That's, that's incredibly powerful and nobody is legally responsible for it um, at Wikipedia because of the the vague relationship between Wikimedia, the entity that yeah. provides the service, and the people who actually write the entries. So somehow this has to be fixed because <laughs> there's nowhere to go. 
But the thing is, as I think I mentioned in my article, um, Jimmy, uh, what's it, Jimmy Wells was the, uh, mm-hmm. the owner. He knows he's been alerted to this particular problem, this particular problem of this one editor, Alex Brown, on numerous occasions. And he's recognised it. He's actually responded to tweets about it and has done nothing. So he's, he's aware, he's fully aware of the problem. He knows it's a genuine problem. He knows that people, he must know that people are being libeled. And yet he allows it to happen. Why? He can do it. He can, he can stop this guy just like that. He can, why doesn't he? Well, I guess I would work from a, di- <laughs> from a different angle. And I would say in a world with any functional tools whatsoever, we would be in a very different place with respect to something like COVID. The reason that we ended up where we are is that the tools to uh, derail anyone who simply evaluated the evidence and came to the logical conclusion that there was something wrong with the idea that we had no uh, drugs available to treat it, that there was something wrong with the idea that these transfection agents were vaccines in the first place, that they were safe enough to contemplate a mass vaccination campaign, that they were effective at controlling COVID in any meaningful way. The evidence is clear enough. And so the only way to maintain the feeble narrative that we have been incessantly sold is to have a power tool for dealing with skeptics as they arise. Right, skeptic. Becoming a skeptic in this case is as simple as reviewing the evidence. That makes you a skeptic. If you're an honest yep. broker and you review the evidence, you are welcome to the to the club of the skeptics. Right. So you have to be able to deal with everybody who enters there, and what's more, you have to be able to punish them. Right. And even if you can't stop a Malone or a McCullough or a Weinstein or a Fenton, you can use them as cautionary tales. Right. When somebody, even if somebody knows that I'm no liar and that I've been very good at predicting things about what took place during COVID, when they see what has happened to my Wikipedia page and they imagine, oh no, yeah. what would I do? Right. They don't want any part of it. And so the, yeah, they, it's a massive deterrent. Yeah. It, it is, it is an incredibly powerful weapon for yeah. controlling, um, the effective belief of of civilization and um, the amount of power there would be hard to overestimate. Yeah, yeah. So you think that, in fact, uh, are you therefore saying that that Jimmy Wells is maybe um, is bought into the narrative himself to such an extent that he thinks it's actually a good thing that this is that this is happening? Well, I don't know, and and the problem is we don't know with any of the people who are behaving paradoxically whether they are doing so because I mean, look, you, you know, psychology is complex. Some people may be genuinely frightened by what happens if they follow the evidence where it leads, and they may then. Uh, due to the cognitive dissonance, rationalize to themselves that the um, the mainstream narrative is more or less in the ballpark, that the skeptics are uh, out over their skis, whatever it is. So, you know, an honest broker who was easily frightened might find themselves in the wrong camp. Somebody who was easily persuaded by... Um, financial incentives or other kinds of opportunities might find themselves in the wrong place. We have no way of knowing, you know, what is a Gorski? I don't know. Um, It it could be any one of a number of things, right? He could be, uh, you know, in it for, in it for the lulls. I doubt it. He's too dedicated. You know, he could have (laughs) financial conflicts of interest. I don't know, but, um, but all I can say is, the evidence is out of phase with many people's behavior whom, who you would expect to have uh, stepped up. And I think in some sense, what has happened to people who have, uh, ha- who have evaluated the evidence and spoken openly about it is the causal factor, right? Why does a guy like Jimmy Wales allow this to take place on Wikipedia. You would imagine that he would, that this is his baby. He would defend the objectivity of Wikipedia um, to the fullest extent possible. Why would he not? Well, it may be 
that he, like everybody else, is concerned about uh, his reputation and his legacy and all of that, and that this seems like not a hill he wants to die on. Yeah, no, I think you're probably right there, yeah. In terms of the motivation of these people, I, I actually don't think, and you look at someone like Alex Brown, I mean, um, I, don't, I don't think he's in it for that. I don't think there's, it's, it's in it for the money. I think these are, these are, he's an ideologue. You know, he goes back, you look at his stuff over years. He, 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 he thinks he knows, he thinks, he thinks he's saving. These people think they're saving the world. Some of them do. They think they're saving the world from people like us. Well, the problem is there's another explanation. So um, my field is, is uh, biology, but I, I take a, a complex systems approach. And so there are a lot of ways you can end up with a particular behavior. And one of them that I worry about is what I call freelancing. So if there is an incredibly, let's just take a cartoon version. I'm not saying that this is what's going on, but let's imagine for a second that what was driving the garbage public health narrative was really pharma profits, pure and simple, okay? Repurposed drugs don't make profits. These transfection agents that we call vaccines are very profitable. Mandates make them even more so. Um, so let's imagine that's what was driving the nonsense. Well, very powerful forces have literally hundreds of billions of dollars at stake in that question, right? If the repurposed drugs work and the transfection agents are dangerous and or ineffective, hundreds of billions of dollars will not end up in certain pockets. That's very powerful. So then the question is, well, what if I'm nobody in particular and I detect that there are hundreds of billions of dollars out there hoping that the world will become persuaded of certain things? And so all I do is I just start innovating. I see how I make nonsense arguments. What I've been pointing out is sophistry. I engage in sophistry in which I defend the safety of the transfection agents. Right? I defend their efficacy. I come up with clever arguments against this, that, or the other study that seems to cast doubt on them. And I put it into the world and I see what happens. Right, And the point is, maybe some wealth finds its way to me. Maybe yeah. suddenly I find myself being followed by large numbers of people. Oh, right? the, yeah. In other words, um, if you imagine yeah. freelancers trying to figure out whose boots are worth licking, Right. Uh, and no, they, you're absolutely right. Those people get, get big followings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they, they end up rising in the world. And so in a world like that, I don't know what to do. My, you know, I've seen analyses of David Gorski that raise questions about conflicts of interest. I'm very curious about them, of course. Um, what to do about Alex Brown? I've never heard of the man until I read your article. Um, <laughs> but I see you weren't know, aware that he'd been responsible for your, a lot of your stuff. Right. I mean, you know, as you say, I don't check my Wikipedia page, yeah, yeah. right? And then somebody alerts you and you go and you look and say, oh my God, wow, that's terrible. And um, yeah, so I do think we have to worry about what I'm calling freelancers, which are people yeah. who may not have official conflicts of interest, but who have discovered that if they say things that are very pleasing to powerful forces yeah. that are eager to shape the narrative, that good things happen to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 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 a very that's that's a very good point. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And there's that, but there's it. But it, but on this whole COVID thing, there's there is a, a it's that it's a relatively small clique, you know, on Wikipedia and on, on on Twitter and, and whatever who who are always in there. I mean, I you know, and there are everybody. I mean, everybody, you know, would have been a uh, would have been attacked, you know, by, by Gorski, by people like Health Nerd. Uh, a guy called Alice McAlpine, a um, um, guy called Kyle Sheldrick. I don't know, you probably, you know, I mean, and some of the, some of the, some of the stuff's been appalling. I mean, and they've even, they try, they really try and destroy people. I mean, do you know what happened, for example, um, with the Paul Marrick? Um, Absolutely, this, uh, with uh, Kyle I mean, Sheldrick, who. Uh, exactly. So I was invited, you know, I, I, I mean, that was, that was, that was incredible, you know, suddenly because they don't like what, what he's saying on, you know things like ivermectin. They suddenly start digging out old, you know, old papers like that and coming up with these ridiculous accusations of fraud. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, here you have here you have a incredibly uh, decent doctor, yeah. highly decorated, uh, who is, you know, who goes to work and saves lives. That's what he does, and he yeah. is being slandered for outright fraud that obviously did not play, take place. That is in yeah. the mind of 
uh, Kyle Sheldrick who misunderstood what he was reading and, yeah. you know, hyperventilated about it. It doesn't um, understand that he thinks he's a statistician. He doesn't understand sort of basic statistics. And yeah. You, I mean, and that's the problem is in this freelancer category I'm talking about, that's a feature, not a bug. Yeah. Right. You've got a lot yeah. less to do if you understand statistics well. Um, yeah. But if you don't, then you have all sorts of room to engage in sophistry and, um, and you know, to, to destroy people's lives and reputations. You know, you, you have to be unscrupulous, too, which yeah. is apparently a, a common feature of people.